So let's continue. The gold standard is a test that it's not perfect, but it's the best test that we have right now. And it might be expensive, it might be cumbersome, but it it's the closest thing we can get to to the actual truth. And so this is what we compare all of our newer tests to. So when we want to compare the results of this new test, we're going to compare it to the gold standard. And this is where we create that 4x4 four four table that we're so familiar with, where we have the truth, the gold standard, uh, or whether the patient really, you know, we find out later they have disease up here at the top with plus meaning they have the disease, minus meaning they don't, and then the test result here, positive or negative. And if the test says it's positive and they actually do, and they actually do have the disease, that's a true positive. If they don't have the disease and the test tells us that, then it's a true negative. Now these two cases are here are where the test is wrong, meaning they do have the disease and the test says that they don't. It's the test is negative. So that negative is false. And it, you can also have that the patient doesn't have the disease but the test erroneously says that they do. So this positive is false. So the accurate accuracy of the test is how often it's right over all the other possible cases. So if it's right all the time, there will be no false positive and no false negative, so these will be gone. So you'll have these two things over each other, which would equal 100%. So you'd have a 100% accurate test. And precision is how reproducible the test results are over time. Meaning each time you run that test on a sample, you're always going to get the same result on the same sample on a precise test. Now, you remember that we learned how to look at those things using uh, target. A shooter who is precise but who isn't accurate is going to get um, be able to cluster his shots all in the same area but they're going to be very far away from the truth which is the center. A shooter who is accurate but who's not precise is going to be able to get somewhere near the center but not always in the same area. A shooter who's precise and accurate is going to be able to get his shots or her shots pretty much in the same area uh, every time and that's going to be dead center. And then finally the shooter who is inaccurate and imprecise is just going to be shooting all over the place never in the same spot twice and not near the center. Now remember back when we were talking about the Bayesian analysis uh, we, we were talking about how pretest probability and post-test probability are related and the factor that lets us make this conversion is called the likelihood ratio. And we talk about the likelihood ratio of a result. And what are our results? Well, in this case, it's positive and negative, but in other cases, it could be other things. And so you are going to look at the likelihood ratio of a result. And so we could look at a likelihood ratio that's positive and a likelihood ratio of a negative result. And that will be all the patients with the disease and with that result over all patients with disease. And this will be over all patients without the disease and, the re and still have that result over all patients without disease. So this is a pretty ugly formula, actually, but it's not that complicated. The numerator is patients with the disease and, the re and also have the result, and the denominator is all the patients without the disease and also have the result. And so that's going to be the likelihood ratio. So let's look at an example. Let's look at the likelihood ratio of a positive test. So the likelihood ratio of a positive test is going to be all patients with a disease who test positive over all patients with a disease. And then you divide that by the number of patients without the disease but who also test positive over all patients without the disease. Now similarly we could do the same thing for a negative test. So the likelihood ratio of a negative test is all patients with the disease and a negative test over all patients with the disease. And you divide that by all the patients without the disease and also have a negative test over all the patients without the disease. So now looking back at this formula here, we know that any likelihood ratio, let's just replace that in there. So any likelihood ratio that is greater than one is going to increase our post-test probability. 
and any likelihood ratio that is less than 1 is going to decrease it. So for a positive test, we would like that to increase our pretest probability because if the test is positive, we want to know that uh, that makes it more likely. So we would want this to be greater than 1. And for a test that's negative, meaning it's going to help us rule out that disease, we want that likelihood ratio to be less than 1. Now this formula isn't exactly right because this these are really odds if you want to make the math work out, but there's a way to make it work out with probabilities too, and we'll go over that. But before doing that, let's actually see if we can use this table to fill out this. All right, so the number of patients with disease and a negative test. So with disease and a negative test is false negatives. And that's going to be over all patients with the disease. So it's going to be over all patients who has a disease, this one. So true positives plus false negatives. Now we want the number of patients without disease that have a negative test. So without disease are these guys. Negative test is here. So true negatives. And that's going to be over all patients without disease. So here are the patients without disease. So false positives plus true negatives. And so here would be our formula for that. So what are some useful values? So a likelihood ratio positive of 1 does nothing. It's a useless test for us because it doesn't change our pretest probability at all. Uh, a l value of 3 to 5 changes it a pretty good deal. That's moderately useful. And then a value of 10 or greater is pretty good because that's going to really, that positive test is really going to increase our post-test probability. And similarly, for a likelihood ratio negative, a value of 1 is not going to decrease our pretest probability. Remember, with a negative test, we want our probability of having a disease to go down. It's a negative test. Uh, a value of oh, point th point, uh, 0.3 to 0.5, maybe, is going to be pretty useful. It's going to decrease the post-test probability quite a bit. And a value of 0.1 or less is going to be significantly useful. It's really going to decrease our post-test probability and help in our decision making. And that is it for likelihood ratios.